Hello, this is a quick demo of the chat GPT integration into MPS. For those who don't know MPS, MPS is a language engineering tool, a language workbench that lets users develop domain specific languages. Um, here is an example domain specific language. I can define a form. Um, I have used this domain because I've worked in the healthcare field recently. For example, we can have a questionnaire about drug abuse and then we can add a field which is how uh, do you smoke and then boolean yes or no and another field how often do you drink alcoholic beva beverages and put a number I don't know, you know, whatever, per can't type today, per week, right? And then we can have a calculation um, that says, you know, oh, you know, the smoke, uh, you know, um, has a problem. And then we would say, if you smoke, or how often is greater than 10 or something, right? So you have fields, you have calculations. In the calculations, you can refer to fields and uh, you can use expressions to do the computations. There is um, also a ability to test this stuff where I can create a test for the drug abuse. I can add the missing items. I can say, do you smoke? Uh, false, uh, I think it's called uh, false, right? How often do you drink alcohol? Three times. So I have a problem expected to be false. I can run this test, it's okay. I can create another test where I've set this to true and then, okay, yes, because we smoke, this should be true, right? So it's, it's, it's a very simple language, but it demonstrates the ability to create your own syntax, your own abstractions, and then run them and test them as you would expect from a, for example, healthcare professional who works with this stuff. Now to the GP, chat GPT stuff. Whole point is that these things can be generated. I have um, here this place where you can enter a prompt. I can manually type a prompt. Uh, I have prepared a couple so I don't have to type as much. So create a questionnaire form about sleeplessness, right? Submit and then you know, we talk to the big uh, intelligence in the sky, takes a little while, and we get back a form. There's two things relatively interesting. One is that it understands the language, right? So it knows how to build structurally, syntactically valid forms. And it has a notion of what might be interesting data to collect, uh, you know, feeling tired, hours of sleep, uh, waking up during the night, and so on. Um, and uh, I mean, this is not so, you know, surprising because as we all know um, ChatGPT is good at making up reasonable sounding stuff so in this case I just taught it to make up the stuff in a format I can understand here um, so yeah the fact that it comes up with these names is not so surprising but anyway I find this overall sleep quality calculation technically interesting because it builds valid expressions but it's kind of meaningless right so I'm going to change this to plus right instead of the division and then yeah if we feel tired then the sleep quality is kind of this is uh, other this is reverse right so if we have difficulty falling asleep and wake up during the night then we return one so that's supposedly bad right but um, here it's the other way around if we feel tired we return zero so I guess this should be the other way around so I don't think that we can expect chat GPT to to understand these if you will execution semantics but the interesting thing is that I just noticed that I made that you, you just noticed I made corrections, right? I changed this here and I made this a plus. So let's submit the second uh, chat GPT command, add a field about the expected sleep duration. So I'm submitting. It takes the usual time until uh, chat GPT produces a result, usually a couple of seconds. And you can see it has the expected sleep duration as a number and it kept my changes. Right, so this is important. That's the system that I built here uh, allows you to modify 
um, what you get from chat GPT and then when you ask it it the AI in the sky um, for additional changes it doesn't destroy your stuff right so let's add another one at a calculation sleep ratio that divides the hours of sleep by the expected sleep duration multiplied by 100 to get the percent Add another calculation that returns true if all if the sleep ratio is below 60 let's run and we can see it did the right stuff right Our hours of sleep times 100 divided by expected sleep duration okay i would have written it the other way around but okay who cares i mean we can make a big change right so we can um put the times 100 here um and if the sleep duration sleep ratio is below 60 then uh this called below 60 maybe when the roller has problems sleeping enough right and now the fourth one use the i renamed this right so i should change this here use the has problem sleeping enough calculation in the overall sleep quality calculation so we want this to somehow show up here uh, run and we will very likely see that it fails because it doesn't understand the nuances of how to construct valid expressions uh, well enough it just reordered things right uh, here but on the other hand i mean expecting that these expressions are correct is is useless anyway so okay where are we um first of all it is technically as you can see uh feasible to integrate chat gpt with nps or for that matter with other dsl tools okay not so surprising second um we were able to teach G chat gpt this language well enough so that it produces kind of good stuff it's not deeply surprising and scientifically valid good stuff but it's reasonable so if you put yourself into the perspective of a um, healthcare professional who is kind of designing these forms then supposedly you understand the subject matter right you understand what you want the system to uh, ask or what the questionnaire should ask but maybe you don't quite understand this language you know because some software engineer built this for you so you can design these kinds of forms and while this is reasonably intuitive maybe some of the details are not so you can use the pros uh, support here to have yourself uh, generated or to, to get yourself reasonable examples generated um, for example if you don't understand boolean expressions right you could say and i didn't try this before so let's try if this works at another calculation that demonstrates things or opera or expressions like greater uh, greater than less than as well as the logical and or expressions see what happens so you might type this as a healthcare professional because you don't you know know how this language works obviously these are trivial examples you probably do know but you can ask it to generate these examples do -do -do. and you can uh, see a bunch of stuff it has the greater operator it has the and it has the not equal right so that's kind of reasonable and so presumably from this you can now make your own changes to produce something that's scientifically valid medically valid now of course you don't you know completely trust the system so you would then go here and uh, delete the old tests from before say there is a test for the sleeplessness form and add the missing items delete the old crap and now you can you know exercise these forms personally i think we should not ask gpt to generate the tests as well because of a self-fulfilling prophecy problem so even if we kind of assume that um, healthcare professionals who use this kind of system can get their if you will models generated from pros like i demonstrated i think they should still write the tests manually and, uh, and understand what the notion of tests are right so if you i don't even want to write one now i've demonstrated it before um, because if if you have everything generated then probably everything kind of runs and it's still nonsense 
Anyway, so that's the quick demo of the uh, ChatGPT integration into MPS. The more technical description will either be in a second video or if you go to the uh, GitHub, then you can see in the README how to install, how to set up, a little bit of background, and then also a brief technical overview how this works and which parts of the code do what. All right, so that's it. Ciao.